Gents, I just want to pause the episode for a moment to let you know about the Strong Men of Value Academy. You will have heard me refer to it a number of times and I want to bring more attention to it. So this isn't just a program. It's a life-changing environment and community of men who are focused on personal and professional growth. We're looking at areas of relationships, wealth and health, things to help you thrive and maximize your life. Imagine having bi-monthly one-on-one coaching sessions with myself, weekly group coaching calls, and an incredible brotherhood of high achievers by your side. Now we're diving into resilience, leadership, and holistic growth to not just succeed in your career, but to thrive in your health and your relationships. Your journey to greatness, it starts here. So join the movement and you can apply for the Strong Men of Value Academy. You can head to the manthatcanproject.com to find out more. You're listening to The Man That Can Project with Lockie Stewart, a global movement created to empower men and open up what's really going through their minds by having real and raw conversations about life's unique challenges and our individual ways of processing it all. Welcome to The Man That Can Project. What's up, gents? Happy Tuesday. Wherever you're listening to this, it might be a Monday night if you're uh, elsewhere in the world, but welcome back. Thanks for uh, tuning in again, gents, and I hope you got a lot out of yesterday's episode. I know today is going to be an absolute belter because this topic on Instagram went off, so I'm excited to sort of share it more in depth Uh around the stuff that I couldn't really put into a, a small Instagram post. So as the title goes, and well, I'd probably get you gents to nod your head, you know, I'm not going to see it, but just to yourself, if you've ever heard this or if you've ever said this, one's too many and ten's not enough, right? There was a point in my life where I used to say this and I truly believed it. And some of you may be in the point where you do truly believe it, okay? Or you may be in a point where you know you're bullshitting yourself. And I, I laugh or I joked about on the, the photo that I used, I had two cans of 4X Gold, uh, which is a mid-strength beer for those who aren't from Queensland or Australia. Uh, and it's a, it's a really light beer, right? You could punch 100 of them and still be walking, All right? So... Uh, I, I joked that, you know, obviously you definitely need more than 10 with those to get that buzz on. But for me personally, I used to say this because I believe I hid behind it, right? It was a way for me to, to avoid taking responsibility for my lack of responsibility, right? I always like to say, you know, and I talk about this a lot, being, uh, being taking ownership or being in control of who you are and your actions was, you know, that saying was just me avoiding it. That saying was me not accepting responsibility and allowing the bad behavior that generally was a ripple effect of drinking too much uh, beer or alcohol. I blame that on, oh, you know, I just can't stop at one. It's always going to be a hundred and and that's why I act this way. Rather than going, well, Lockie, why do you act this way? One, probably because you're fucking drunk and intoxicated, but why do you feel the need to have so many beers? What is it? And for me, it's like when I thought about that, or even sitting in this situation right now, you know, and it's funny because I went to the watch the UFC on uh, Sunday and I had probably had three or four beers and we're buying jugs and it was easy for me to say no because I know my limit and I also you know no I don't need to keep punching beers to have fun whereas back in the day you know I just thought hey this is so fun I'm feeling really good maybe if I have more I'm gonna feel even better and that's what I believed and obviously it was awesome to a point where you wake up the next day and you know nine times out of ten I'd done something stupid or I had a fucking splitting headache and then I go and you guys can probably relate to this I I was like, no, nah, definitely not drinking anymore. And then, you know, be back on that next next weekend. So it was just that really all or nothing approach. And it's that same all or nothing approach that I see people take in all aspects of their life. You know, with their diets, with their relationships. And to me, and for those, you know, you keep listening to this, I talk about 
balance and I talk about the eight areas that we all need to master. And one of those is our mental and emotional well-being or health. And I believe you know, that one too many and ten's not enough is, is an area that we can work on through our mental and emotional health and understanding ourselves better and understanding why specifically we may drink, drink more than that. Right? Because I do believe, and I, I, put a, I put a lot of, not pressure, I put a lot of, I don't like to say faith because I'm not a religious dude, but let's say trust in people's ability to actually get to a point where they can, you know, drink, whether you want to say responsibly or um, actually just enjoy it and not rely on it to have a good time. Right? If you feel like having a beer because it's a hot day or whatever, awesome. And that's where I got to. Um, <clears throat> and I, I wanted to be able to get to that point without making a dick of myself. So, gents, now that I sort of got your attention with that, if you use that or if you hear that, trust me when I say there's something more to it. Obviously, you know, some people are more heavily invested in that, but I also believe that over time we've encouraged the behavior or we've encouraged that way of thinking that some men just can't deal with too much alcohol and I think it's bullshit I think that's everyone rallying around not empowering the person to take control or, or gain understanding around their behavior or maybe what's causing them to drink excessively or not being able to just have a few casual beers that's my opinion you guys may disagree and you're more than welcome to because I, I've experienced the change and I see people create the change all the time and I also see a lot of people remain stuck who fucking hide behind that stuff. So I think it's important to to think about uh, there, you know, when you say one too many and ten's not enough. So guys, like I said, in my experience, this is how I'm, you know, I, I guess, and I chose how I wanted to say that's impacting my life. And alcohol is fun. Don't get me re- wrong. I just don't rely on it. Right, so, man, you're so much stronger than a lot of us are being led to believe. And I know you guys are working on it. That's why you're listening to this podcast. But, you know, if there's areas and addiction doesn't just, it doesn't, isn't there just with alcohol. It's in many aspects of your life. But if you feel like you're falling short because of it, maybe start asking yourself more questions and challenging what you've been led to believe and just you know, challenge how strong you may think you are. Thank you guys for tuning in. If you have more questions around that, hit me up, jump in the Facebook group as mentioned uh, and coming in hopefully, you know, about a month, there'll be a new website which will be slick, easy to use and so much more powerful, so much more powerful, (laughs) a greater user experience. But as always, the Man That Can Project is there to help you build more muscle, momentum, meaning and mateship from your life. So if you want to be a part of anything that we do, reach out on Instagram or uh, leave reviews. Do anything that you can to help us continue to spread the message. Thank you for listening to the Man That Can Project podcast. My name is Lockie Stewart and I hope you enjoyed this episode and found it helpful. If you did, please take a moment to rate and review the Man That Can Project on your favorite podcast platform. And don't forget to subscribe to stay up to date with our newest episodes. We'll see you again next time.